All right. And once the dev server is up and running, I think we could construct our initial fetch images function. So that is going to be the function that is responsible for fetching our images, at least the initial function, because there's going to be some refactoring a little bit later. And also by the end of the video, we're going to set up the environment variable just so we can omit setting the API key in our source code. And of course, I'll talk about it, why we would want to do that and how we can do that in create react app once we get there for the time being, we'll just start with app JS. We also have, and by the way, this is what happens when you have too many windows open. So I'll close all of them. And I'm just looking for the app JS that is specific to the source in the setup. So let me open this one because that's the one that we're going to be working. In. And like I said, I would want to start by setting up some kind of function here. And the name of the function is going to be fetch images. So we go here with const and then fetch images. That is our initial function. And I would want to use async. So I'm going to go here with async. And as far as the fetch functionality, I will set it up in try and catch. So just to spice things up again, remember, we had this try and catch option where we try something. And if that fails, then of course, we can do something with our error. And as far as what we would want to try, we're going to go with const and then response is equal to await since we already have the async and we're going to go with fetch and then URL. Now, of course, I haven't constructed the URL yet. So that's why above the try, we're going to do that. I'm going to say that there's going to be a property of URL. And the reason why I'm using let is because it will change depending on whether we're going to be searching or we just want to get the default images. So remember, in our application, we can get default images like so, where essentially we just load the application and we're getting some images by default from the unsplash, or there's also going to be an option of search. That's why there's going to be multiple URLs. And for the time being, we'll just start with the simple one where we have the main URL. So that's the one where we're getting the photos. And I would just want to append that client ID. So let's go here with URL. And that one will be equal. And now, of course, since I would want to construct that URL, I'm going to have to use the template literal, where first I'm going to get the main URL. And then remember, per documentation, what we needed to do. We need to go with a question mark because we already have the forward slash, correct? And after the question mark, we write client and ID. That's our parameter. And now, of course, I would want to get my value. So I'm going to navigate back where I have the access key and I'm going to copy and paste. So we have the URL. Awesome. At least the initial version. And then I would want to wait for response. So in this case, again, I will call this data and then await, of course, and we're going to go with a response dot JSON and we're going to invoke it. And if there is an error, we'll console log the error. So let's go with log and then error like so. And also I would want to set up, of course, the use effect as well as the state values. And we'll have more state values a bit later. But for now, we're just going to go with loading. Since again, we're fetching data, so might as well set loading right away. So set loading and that one is equal to use state. And then we pass in the false. So by default, we won't be loading. OK, awesome. And then also let's get the photos. So I'm going to say here photos and set photos function. So that will, of course, set up the list of photos that we're getting back by default again empty array. And then once we have this one in place, where we have fetch images before the URL, I would want to set loading to be true, like so. And then where I have the error, I also would want to set it up. 
I also would want to say that, yeah, you know what? I would want to set loading to false, even if there is an error. So we're going to go with set loading, and that one is equal to false. And now, of course, what is missing is the use effect. So we go here with use effect, and then I would want to run it when, well, I would want to run it when the app loads. So we're going to go with fetch images or fetch photos, whatever is the function name. And I'm going to go with empty array. And then, of course, for the time being, we'll just console log the data just so we can see something in a console. I'm going to navigate to the bigger browser window, localhost 3000. We should have our text. But what we really care about in a console is this object. So for the time being, there's some kind of error. Okay, interesting. But then we have the object. And in here it says, well, the access token is invalid. Okay, and I'll purposely leave these errors because I would want you to see that once you start working with these external APIs, yes, you might have some bugs, but you don't need to freak out. You just need to go like, okay, so I've got some kind of error. So definitely I need to double check whether I'm setting up my URL correctly. So what we're going to do is go back to the API documentation. Again, scroll up. I guess we're going to go with list of photos. And essentially what I'm looking for is this authentication. So maybe not even list of photos. What you would want is the public authentication. And then if I'm checking, notice the URL that they provide has this parameter of question mark and then client ID. So my access token is correct, the one that I provided. However, this parameter is not. So it should be client ID. And the reason why I'm showing you that, and by the way, I still set it up incorrectly, it should be underscore, is because a lot of times I see where students just get a bit confused the first time they hit the error. Don't be afraid. Yes, when you're working with API, you might hit some roadblocks, but you just need to double check that your URL is correct. So in this case, once I load, now I should have my 10 images, correct? Because if we remember documentation, and again, I know it's a bit annoying because it's somewhat big. So I kind of just scroll up and down. Essentially, I'll have to show you that by clicking on links. So in this case, that is list of photos. Notice I have the page, I have per page, and I have order by. Now, all of them have already some default values. That's why we get 10 items back. 